Okay, we're going to look at a couple other ways of approaching personality. And that's the way that the humanists and social cognitive theorists approach it and try to understand uh, where they come from and how they deal with the development of personality in humans. So first we're going to look at uh, the humanistic theories. And the humanists are, take a real positive view of humanity and they really appreciate human culture, human uniqueness, and just the general goodness of humanity. And a lot of what we see in humanism is very much a response to behaviorism as it approaches, which kind of took the uniqueness out of humans and in many ways turned them into robots or robotic kind of molds where there was not much in the way of free will, but rather just act. Uh, and so the humanists uh, really focus on subjective reality and the mental events that go along with it in order to get different perspectives from every person. They recognize the uniqueness of each individual and they want to celebrate that. Uh, and what we find is that many humanists believe that self-actualization, which is becoming the person that you are capable of, like achieving your highest potential in whatever creative way that may be, is truly the ultimate purpose for existence. That is what many humanists would argue. Uh, and one of those is, and he's not kind of the main one. The main one's going to be Abraham Maslow. But one of the first ones is Carl Rogers. And Carl Rogers argues for this thing called self, that he says that is the self is the most important aspect of personality. And the self-concept is our mental re representation of who we feel we truly are. And that's kind of that reflection on uh, who we feel we want to be, who we feel we should be. And Rogers says that we have internal conflicts when we suffer uh, incongruence. That is a moment when there is some discrepancy and disparity between how we view ourselves and how the world around us and the people around us view us. And we're able to know that because we get feedback from certain people or feedback from events. So when we're told uh, we're not that nice or we're not that funny or we tell it, we may tell a joke because we think we're so funny. And when nobody laughs, we feel conflict because there's some incongruence there. Well, I thought it was funny, but no one laughed at my joke. Or I thought I was handsome, but when I went to pick up this person, I was rejected. That leads to incongruence, and that then creates internal conflict. Um, and so Roger says that the conditions of worth, that is how other people value how much we are and what we are worth, can distort our self-concept. And so he says that outside influences play a huge role in affecting how we see ourselves. So we have to get the self-concept from somewhere. Um, and we have to get our sense of self-worth from somewhere. And Rogers argued that parents and teachers play a huge role in that. And so these parents and teachers, according to Rogers, uh, should treat children with unconditional positive regard, is what he how he phrases it. And that is essentially that we need to let children know that no matter what, they still have worth. Now, we need to correct them for their mistakes. Rogers would not argue for glorifying everything a child does or fawning over some individual person, but that there needs to be uh, some belief that no matter what you do, you have value and you are good. Uh, and so the, he argues that this is the role parents and teachers need to play in giving people the beginnings of these self-worth so that their self-concept is solid and rooted in a foundation of belief in who they are as a good and worthy human being. The next person that comes along is uh, Abraham Maslow, and he creates a hierarchical need or hierarchy for organizing needs. And he divides it into five levels, and he basically says that in order to get from the first level to the next level, uh, these needs need to be met. And so the goal is to achieve self-actualization, which is, again, that creative uh, expression of the true self and the best self that we are. And in order to get from physiological needs to self-actualization, there's a lot of steps along the way. Uh, first, we need to be have our physiological needs met, our biological needs, right? Food, water. Um, and then we need safety and security. We need shelter. We need to know that we're going to be okay. 
then we need to have our belongingness met so we need to feel like we're part of a group and once we've got all that then we our self-esteem needs need to be met so until we really feel like we belong somewhere we really struggle to have any sense of self-esteem but once we feel like we belong we get our self-esteem going and then from there he says we're finally able to reach our highest point which is this self-actualization and that is the goal for all humans to reach this self-actualization so that was the humanists the social cognitive theories um work off the assumption that cognitive constructs that is mental constructs the way we think about things the way we think about ourselves and others are the basis for personality so we bring our constructs that is expectations schemas um, and various other things to every social situation and then these expectations are modified by the social environment that we surround ourselves with and through those constructs they're then modified they're built stronger and so we see our personality begin to develop out of those uh, social interactions and the one who really um, really pushes this is Albert Bandura and he pushes the uh, concept of self-efficacy as being absolutely crucial to personality and uh, Bandura says that self-efficacy is your belief about your given abilities in a certain situation. And he says that we bring these to all the interactions that we encounter. And when we then are given a social situation, how we feel we can do it will affect our outcome. And uh, interestingly enough, it turns out that the belief that you can do a task greatly increases the chance that you can actually do it so if you have confidence in your own abilities you are more likely to actually then achieve the task than someone who is unsure of themselves so that confidence is a huge factor um and bandura says that everyone is unique and different and the people have different styles and different ways in which they react to different situations so everyone may face the same situation but based off who they are previous experiences uh, previous schemas they will react differently to that situation. And so Bandura represents a break from one of his predecessors, B.F. Skinner, who argues that people just kind of react to the world around them and they're passive actors. But Bandura says, you bring your self-efficacy, you bring your belief system, you bring how strong you are to every social interaction, and thus you affect every social interaction, and in turn, every social interaction affects you. So it's very much a reciprocal view of the development of personality and then the last thing we'll look at is what's called the locus of control theory uh, and Julian Rotter proposes this and it's similar in many ways to self-efficacy but the locus of control is basically how much do you believe that your successes or failures are due to your actions and Rotter says that this has a uh, major role in personality development and people who have an internal locus of control really truly believe that successes or failures are a result of their effort so when they do well on a test they don't think oh i got lucky or the teacher helped me they think i worked hard and i was successful these people are intrinsically motivated they have some internal drive to do well and then you have people who have an external locus of control and they're more likely to attribute their success or failure to luck or chance so instead of saying I did well on this test because I studied hard or hard or I didn't do well on this test because I didn't study hard these people would say well I didn't do well on this test because it was unfair and that my teacher didn't go over these things and that I you know it's not my fault or I had a bad morning and so or I didn't wear the right clothes they'll they're more likely to attribute their failure to um, luck and so this really according to Rotter really affects uh, the way that personality is developed is how much ownership do you take of the events in your life and so Rotter kind of builds off Bandura's ideas of that self-efficacy but says that it goes kind of both ways and that you can either try to own it and be positive about it or try to dissuade and dismiss any negative effects on you.